Hey there, welcome to Synth Seeker. My name is Luke. In this video today, I'm going to share why I think you should buy more synthesizers. Be happy about doing it and not worry about gas at all. There's this common line of thought in the quote, making music with synthesizers community that says, try to limit yourself because limitations set you free, uh, creatively speaking. And that line of thought is usually applied when talking about our synth collections, be that hardware or software or anything that's uh, gas inducing gear for making music. This is a well-meaning chestnut of advice and when applied, it may help you make more music, but I think it's often misapplied. Let me explain. Creatively speaking, I am a bunch of slashes. I'm a software designer slash music composer slash song producing slash performing slash coaching teacher. Okay. Um, it's a lot of slashes, right? Let's just say I have a hobby of creative work in music and music related media. Okay. Um, what are the outputs of my hobby? Well, two things, music in the form of songs and compositions, I put releases out, and videos. And videos fall into a bunch of categories, performances of those songs, or tutorials about a particular technique for making music, or documentation of my process, you know, production logs. And then there's the community, right? The video community on YouTube and you know, all the associated places. So the outputs of my hobby is generally music, songs and compositions, and videos, performance, tutorials, documents, community, right? Now the elements that make up my music and my videos are timbres, pitches, harmonies, and rhythm, right? The pieces of the individual pieces of music, parts of music, uh, but also words and stories and visuals, right? But my tools, linking back to the title, all right, tools are the things I buy and I collect. My tools allow me to create these key elements for my hobby, right? And my tools fall into a couple categories. I have creative tools for timbres, pitches, harmonies, and rhythms, the musical stuff. That's my studio is a tool and it's infrastructure, power, signal, controls, things like that. Those are creative tools for my music and also my synthesizers, the hardware and the software. And I have other instruments that aren't necessarily synths beyond, you know, stuff beyond synths. So getting back to the buying, I buy tools, I collect tools, and I see a lot of discussion about gas and this line of thought saying you should really limit your tools and buy less gear and less tools because limitations set you free. But I think more correctly, that limitation in this context is actually a form of innovation or a new way to use the tools that are available to you, be they bought or things you already own. Creative limitation is a constraint that you put on yourself for the duration of your creative work, whatever that project is. It doesn't mean stop buying tools or sell the ones you have. That to me feels more like the old and stupid in my opinion, uh, the old idea that true art is born from suffering. If that's your thing, go for it, but I don't want to work with you. <laughs> don't, don't invite me to your salon. That sounds like oh, just a world of pain, right? No, thank you. The best part of creative hobbies, the best feels, the most rush that you get comes from being inspired and bringing forth the results of that inspiration. Creativity is all about the inspiration. It's about getting into that flow. It's about being one with your muse and pick your metaphor. When I'm doing creative work, I almost exclusively am inspired by new things, new ideas that I have. Oh, I'll try X new tools. Here's a new synth. It's very inspiring. That's going to put me in the flow. I'm going to do the thing. Or new approaches to using my old synths or old musical ideas, remixing them, recombining them, synthesizing, pun, not, well, pun intended, I guess. 
synthesizing new art. Can I use this old synth with the new synth, combine them in an interesting way? Can I take an old synth and do something it was never intended to do? You know, that's inspirational. And those require tools. And you don't limit yourself. You don't put constraints on your tools necessarily. You put constraints on your approaches and how you use them. Now, this is the important part. All of my ideas, my tools, and approaches are framed in terms of limitations, or I prefer to say constraint. I like constraint. Constraint sounds much like... Uh, Constraint is a much better word than limitation. Constraint sounds like you're strapping yourself into a machine that's going to, you know, take you into orbit or move at high velocity or explode on impact or something. <laughs> I prefer I prefer to say constraint. Um, I choose constraints for my project. Right? I don't say I'm limiting myself. I don't say I'm using limitations to make myself more creative. I say I'm choosing constraints for this project. And that constraint may be, I'm only using these three synths, or I'm only going to use these particular pieces of software, or I'm going to use a particular synth and in a way that combines it with something else, maybe a piece of software or some other tooling. Those are creative constraints. They're not stop, they're not gas, okay? They're not stop buying synths, stop getting tools, stop trying new things. That's... That's the wrong application of the limitations will set you free. You have to have the right amount of constraints. Some, but not too many. If your project has no constraints, then you're, it's, it's aimless. You're just wandering around. It's boring, right? You know, what pitches will I use? Oh, I'm going to put a constraint on there. I'm going to use this particular scale or this chord progression. But if you say there are no constraints on the pitches I'm going to use, I'm going to use all of them. Right? Where do I go from here? Ugh. Conversely, if your project has too many constraints, then your progress from a creative perspective is frustrating and blocked. Which pitches will we use in this project? Well, we're only going to use 440 hertz. That's our constraint. That's going to be a painful project. It's not that limitation sets you free or constraints set you free. It's that a few constraints help you invent new ideas, invent new tools, invent new approaches to reuse your older ideas and older tools. So again, getting back to the title, buy more synthesizers or buy more tools and apply them with a few constraints to become inspired and innovate. Gas is a myth, bad or destructive human behavior is not the fault of your synthesizers. That's a you problem. And yes, you have to be on top of being an adult and having enough executive brain function to recognize addiction or other hoarding behaviors or overspending on anything. Overspending is bad, but it's not the stuff you buy's fault. That's on you as a consumer. If the tools bring you joy, wallow in them. Let them inspire you. When the newness wears off, maybe you need a new tool or you need to remix an old tool by applying a constraint to it. It's your adult behavior that will keep you fiscally solvent. It's not gas that's causing the problems. Okay, gas is a myth. It doesn't exist. It's something we invented so that we could blame something outside ourselves. It's not on me. I, I keep buying sense because I can't avoid the gas. It's like putting it out there as a disease. It's not my fault I caught a disease. It's obviously, you know, it's blame the disease, blame the syndrome. That's a cop out. So buy more sense, apply innovative constraints, and be happy. Thanks for spending time with me here at Sin Seeker. Have a great week.